Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. Uh, today I want to talk a little bit about quarantining. I'm mostly going to talk about it in the kind of how it applies to discus, and that's mainly because this video is just an excuse to show off the fantastic new discus I've got, but we'll get to that in a minute. And um, behind me is the display tank in the living room, but the lights are off. Alexa, turn on the display light. So, okay. a few weeks ago, if you've seen any of the videos, um, I had a power cut. Uh, it was this entire floor, which included this tank. So I moved all the fish, well not all the fish because there's still a few in there. I moved most of the fish downstairs into the garage. Everything was fine, didn't lose any fish or anything. But the power was out for about a week. When it came back on, it was on intermittently, so when it came back on the lights were on for days at a time. It's just a bit neglected, this tank. I've been really busy in other areas of life. So the tank needs a bit of attention, so I've reached the decision point, so what do I need to do to fix this? Do I want to get the new fish in here at all, or do I want to leave this empty so I can really attack this? And in the back of my mind, um, you might have heard of the Felix Smart device. Um, I got on that bandwagon, and I've got one of them coming in a couple of months, and one of the features it's got is this um, kind of aquascaping assistance mode. Not sure that's the best way to describe it, but I thought about trying it out for that, so I might just tidy this up a little bit and get the fish in here. Um, but it's just a bit of a mess at the moment. There's algae, it's all there. So let's go and have a look at the new fish because that's the most exciting bit. So here they are. Got myself five new discus from Corbin Discus. We've got one Penang eruption and the rest are all floras. I'm a sucker for that classic Turk type of patterning and the look. Um, but I also quite like the spotty one, so that's why I ended up with a Penang. When I was picking these ones, my criteria for picking fish is basically you see any of them straight on, they've got quite thick heads. That's a personal preference for me as I like a, a good thick head because I I believe that means that they're going to grow on to be quite sturdy fish. If they're a bit too thin, I don't know whether it's me or something else, but they just they never seem to reach their full potential for me if they, they're thin at this size. These are all quite sturdy fish. The shape, obviously you want a circle because they're called discus. Um, but as you can see, these guys are all super attentive. They've been in here two weeks now almost. Um, well, exactly. I'll just show you how voraciously they go for some dinner. I'll just drop in a little bit of food up the top here. Bam, straight on it. These guys at this size. So if I put my hand here to show you what kind of size we're talking about. They are eating four times a day, if I remember. Um, that old adage about eat as much as you can within five minutes. So they not let anything last more than one minute. So they're great feeders. Hopefully in years to come or months to come, we might get a pair out of these as well and start another breeding project. So let's talk about quarantine for a minute. This is very much my opinion rather than something you must do and you have to do. There are several methods out there and I'm just going to tell you what I do and it's what, what works for me. It's something that's very common in the discus world but it can be applied to any kind of fish so it doesn't matter what it is, quarantining is very important and the reason that you're doing it is you're trying to stop um, whether it's pathogens or parasites or whatever it is from one source of fish infecting another source of fish. So if your first source of fish is your current stock, whether it be discus, tetras, whatever that might be, and you buy some new from a local fish store, a local breeder, a specialist, whatever it might be, they come from potentially different sources, uh, different farms, if they're well caught, different areas of the world even. They can carry very different 
things. So fish A may have a disease that it can cope with perfectly well, or a parasite rather, or whatever it might be. That fish over here has never encountered this, and if they get it, it hits them like a ton of bricks and they go down hard. So this is what you're trying to avoid, and we'll talk about treatment in a while, but what the ideal scenario is, or the ideal I think, is the um, the sacrificial lamb method, we call it. So you have tank A, which is your current fish, you bring in your new fish that you've just bought from wherever you've bought them. Let's assume you don't know anything about them at this point. Ideally, they go into a tank on their own, far away from this tank over here. Um, you make sure you're not using the same hoses, the same nets, you're washing your hands before you deal with one tank and go into the other tank. You're trying to be as biosecure as you can. Uh, you're doing everything right and you're going to give it four to six weeks if you're really worried and you're going to watch them like a hawk basically. In this sort of situation I've got my little mini fish room so I've got a few options. So we've got my new fish in here obviously and if you look over here we've got the majority of the old fish. So this is about as close as I want them at the moment, so I've got a bit of separation between the two. Um, ideally I'd have them in a different room altogether, but it's just what we've got for working for at the moment. But we've got separate nets uh, for each side of the fish room. Um, not using the same hoses for changing water or anything, it's all automatic down here anyway. But it presents me with a few options. I can either take one fish out of here and put it in this tank for instance and take one of the fish from this tank and put it in with it. A little too close for comfort for splashes, it only needs a splash of water and you've got that cross contamination. So what I'll probably do is take these fish all upstairs except for one and just move one of the fish over. Obviously not everyone's got 20 odd tanks to play with. Um, it really is worth investing in a hospital tank or a quarantine tank. It doesn't even need to be an actual physical glass or acrylic aquarium. It could just be like a big storage tub. Um, it's the kind of thing that you need a bit of space, but it's not something you want to set up permanently because if you set it up permanently, then you run into the problem that I run into and lots of other people have run into. Whereas you set something up permanently, it becomes a permanent aquarium and then it's not available to be a hospital or a quarantine. So bear that in mind. It seems like a great idea at the time, but it's usually not. And you're looking for various things. You're looking for behaviour. So are they fresh? Are they up? Are they attentive? Are they eating well? Are they going for food straight away? Or are they hiding? Are they sulking? Are they going dark? Are they just not looking quite right? Even if you can't put your finger on it directly. You're looking at signs like, what's their poo like? Lovely subject. Is it good and strong, <laughs> or is it white and stringy, or is it um, lumpy, is it segmented? These are all signs that you could be one thing or another, whether it's internal parasites, external parasites. Uh, in the discus world we're looking for things like worms, we're looking for things like gill flukes. Um, but the pathogens and some of the parasites that we can't readily see, um, we just have to monitor for them later. So. In the first instance, you're giving them a, a good couple of weeks. Uh, personally, I go for two weeks. So the fish that I've just bought today, for instance, not today, the other week, I know where they're coming from. They're coming from a good source, from a good breeder, um, and they've been looked after well by the specialist that I bought them from. So I know he's doing an element of quarantine, and that's not the same as your local fish shop buying in fish from a wholesaler and they sat in their tanks for a week. That doesn't really count because they're going through so many systems you don't know what's going on there so you should really give them the, the whole four to six weeks if you can but let's call it two weeks so I get these fish in I look at them I monitor them I'm happy that they're eating that they're active that they're happy they're not hiding I'm going to mark them off as safe at this point it's not 100% foolproof but we've got to draw the line somewhere then what you want to do is take one of those fish and separate it and that in effect um, becomes one of two sacrificial lambs so that goes into a tank on its own ideally uh, you bring over one of your current stock and put that into that third tank um, and you do the same again you monitor them you're looking for signs that they're eating that they're not hiding all the same sort of stuff that we've talked about before 
it's slightly more difficult in that that's a bit of an unusual situation for two new fish to be kept alone so they might be hiding anyway so you've got to apply a certain amount of common sense and reading between the lines if you like but you're going to give them the same sort of thing another if you're really not sure another four to six weeks but generally in my experience if it's something bad like the discus plague for instance or cross contamination it's going to hit within the first couple of days it's usually like in a 48 hours in that sort of period that you'll see one of them going a bit dark and they'll stop eating you know you've got a problem and that's when you need to start treatment i'm not going to, not going to talk about necessarily the best treatments um, it might be different for different fish, there might be different approaches for different areas of the world, wherever you are. Go on to a forum, find someone you trust, ask them what they do. And um, We'll talk about medication in a future video about that, but this is just about spotting the signs. And we, we will assume that everything's going swimmingly. You've had your new fish, taking one out of it, your old fish, taking one out of it, giving them another couple of weeks in there. Everything's happy, you know you're fine then. That's when you can bring everything together and you can have your beautiful discus display. And especially when we're talking about discus, this is when it's really vital to get a supplier that you trust. Because my discus friends are from Corbin Discus, I know Tim very well, I've visited him many times, I've seen his tanks, I've seen his operation and know he takes care of his fish. That buys me a bit of time there, so I know I don't need to monitor them for six weeks because he's been monitoring them for weeks as well before I get them. And he'll tell me if there's anything I need to look out for. He's not going to give me fish that he's worried about, so I'm pretty much certain I can skip that first step. But I don't. I make sure at least give it that a couple of weeks at least. Make sure that they're eating. Make sure that they're happy before I do anything else. Because if the disc stops eating, that's when it all starts to go wrong in my experience. But if I was buying this off eBay or I bought a load of fish or someone handed them in to me. I don't know anything about them, I've got to give them that full four to six weeks and I've got to make sure that they've got time to present anything um, so as I don't miss it before I mix them in with my own fish. Another reason for making friends with your local friendly discus breeder or discus specialist is that if you get on the good side, they'll give away half a tub of or half a bucket of discus food that they don't like. And you can use that yourself. Thank you Tim if you're watching. I well, hope that's been of some use to you. If you get any more questions, please let me know down in the comments. I said I wasn't going to talk about specific treatments in medicine because that can just open up a whole new can of worms. Um, there are lots of ways to quarantine your fish. If you've got better ways or you've got more interesting ways or things I've not thought about, by all means stick them down in the comments and uh, let me know what you think. And if it's been in any way useful, please click that subscribe button or even if it wasn't useful, click it anyway. Or give me a thumbs down if you didn't like it, thumbs up if you did, and I'll catch you next time. Bye bye.